Hello, and thank you for coming to my talk on code level model checking in the software development workflow. My name is Daniel schwartz -Narbon. I'm an applied scientist at Amazon Web Services Automated Reasoning Group. And today we're going to be talking about a formal verification engagement that we had, where we saw some really unique interactions with the development team and some really unique successes that we haven't seen before. So the takeaway is that specifications are really the most important part of a formal verification engagement. It's the hardest thing to get right. And I don't think I need to convince an ICSI audience that specifications on code are a good thing. And I don't think I need to convince an ICSI audience that developers are the best people to write those specifications. They're the ones who best understand the code. They're the ones who have a mental model for how the code should work. And unfortunately, I also don't think I need to convince an ICSI audience the developers don't write as many specifications as we perhaps would like them to. Which is why it was surprising to us on this formal methods engagement when developers started writing and adding their own specifications to the code over the course of the engagement. So you can see on the graph here, it's going up over time and these are developers writing it. So what happened? And we believe that it's really because we focused on turning proof into a social process. We focused on the question of, how can we get inside the development workflow of the development team in order to best support them? And just to say a little bit of context, I'm going to be talking about the AWS C Common Library. This is a C library which underpins a number of our SDKs, and we're talking about verifying safety against undefined behavior such as memory safety. So one of our key insights was to use artifacts that fit within the development workflow. So when we write a proof, we write a proof harness that looks like a unit test in C. It's written in C, developers can read it, they can review it, they can modify it, they can write their own. And when we add a specification to the code, we write it as an assertion in C. And this again means developers can read it, they can modify it, they can understand it, and then I'll talk about the value of being able to runtime check these assertions. It's also really important that we provide immediate value to the developer. So developers at Amazon use code reviews and they use continuous integration to ensure that their code is of high quality as it goes out. You write a new code, every commit gets checked against the unit tests, it gets checked against your integration tests, and now it also gets checked against all the formal verification work that we've done. And this provides two values. If you get back a check mark, as a developer, you know that the code you've written has not violated any of the safety properties that have been verified about your code. If you get back an X, you know immediately before the code ever makes it to customers that there's a potential issue and you can fix it right away. So developers can actually work faster because they have the confidence of having, of having formal verification backstopping their work. And fixes are what really matter. This is the thing that we've discovered about issues. There's a known problem with all kinds of techniques. Fuzzing, for example, finds lots of bugs and nobody fixes them. Why? Because what happens is you report an issue to a developer and they say, oh, you're reporting an issue in my code. So what you're saying is my code is no good and you're making more work for me. Gee, thanks. On the other hand, if you give the same developer a fix for the code, you give them a patch that fixes the issue, they say, Oh, now as a result of your patch, this won't happen. My pager won't go off. I'll be able to sleep at night. Thanks, that's awesome. So let's look at how this experience played out in the AWSC Common Library. Let's look at a really simple, a really simple module. This is a byte buffer. It's just an array that carries around its length. So pretty easy to write a specification for that. So we go, we sort of write the obvious specification. We show it to the dev, the dev says, yep, that's the obvious specification. Great, we're off to the races. But remember how I talked about how we put these in as assertions? This is where this really pays off because you start asserting in the code that the obvious specification of this module holds at runtime and it turns out it doesn't. It turns out the question of can buffer be null? Sometimes buffer can be non-null when capacity is zero and some code seems to think that's okay, and some code seems to think that wasn't okay. And in fact, you go to the devs and you say, is this intended? And the one dev says, yeah, we have short circuit behavior in our initializer. Why would we bother setting the buffer field when capacity is zero? No one's gonna use those bytes anyway. 
And the other one says, no, if you don't have data there, that should be null. We want to be able to do null checks. And then there's a, hmm. And the developers actually end up having talking among themselves, having a good conversation and converging on the meaning of the structure. And again, note this is a social process. The technological tools help to drive this question, but the decision of what the actual specification is is a social process between the developers and the team. And now let's look at also we can catch bugs downstream. We can provide value not only to the code we verify, but to the consumers of that code. So we verified AWS C common, we put these assertions in, and the AWS CIO started failing its unit tests. Turned out it was making some calls into the byte buffer that violated the new agreement of how the byte buffer ought to be used. So following our model, we fixed AWS CIO. You can see it's been merged here. And we actually help the development team now because they have the protection of knowing that backwards compatible, of knowing that essentially they've formed a precise contract and they've enforced that with assertions. So they know their downstream users are also acting in a memory safe way. And the finally, then one of the important things is it's much easier to verify code as it's being written than code that was written a long time ago. And we see that our tooling and our strong relationship with the team and the sort of template library that we built for how to write these proofs, all of which are discussed in the paper, allowed us to write proof much faster. And in fact, as the development team was writing their ring buffer module, they requested us to take a look at their PR. They said, you know, you guys are really good at finding bugs. Take a look at our PR. Let us know what you think about this code. And in fact, we turned around and we wrote a proof for that code within a day of the request while the PR was still open. And they merged that proof into master with the same commit as the code. And we got feedback from them that this provided them more confidence than just having unit tests. Because now they knew not only is it correct in terms of unit testing, it's memory safe. And you can see if you look in the code itself, this is the contract that describes the ring buffer. It's somewhat complicated, but it's there. It's checked at runtime with assertions, and it provides the precise definition of what a valid ring buffer is. So the result of this, and again, the details are in the paper, is that we were able to have a predictable cadence for how we developed proofs. We were able to develop a large industrial code base with 171 entry points across nine modules in 24 weeks with a single verification engineer backed by two interns. And we were able to find a bunch of issues. Finding issues are great. Having the service team confirm that they're real issues and many of them of real severity and interest is even better. But the really cool thing is this. 100% of the issues that we reported were fixed. 100% of the time when we reported an issue, they merged the fix. And this is something we'd never seen before. And this is what really provides the value to our customers, is having the fixes come in to issues that are found. And this is something that we believe came as a result of the social connection we built with the development team and of the real focus we had on providing their success through these artifacts. So the takeaway, if you want to have success in formal methods, involve the development team. They're the experts. They're the ones who know the specifications. Make it easy for them to write the specifications into their code, and all of the other good things that I talked about can start to happen. Thank you very much.